RetroArch is the ultimate emulation station, letting you play all your retro console games on your Android phone. Here we'll show you how to set up RetroArch for Android, download some cores, tweak the settings so they're just right, and even do some weird stuff like showing you how to activate achievements for your games. Most importantly, we'll show you how to get gaming on RetroArch. Hi, this is Phil from Make Tech Easier, and here is how to set up and play games on RetroArch for Android. For years, RetroArch has been the indomitable platform of choice for discerning emulation connoisseurs on PC. The all-in-one package designed to load up all your favourite consoles and games from one place is available for Android 2, though the intricacies of setting it up are much less talked about. So, if you've downloaded RetroArch and don't know your core from your content, or just want to know which cores are best for running your favourite console games, follow on. Getting started. The first thing you need to do, of course, is install RetroArch from the Play Store. Once you've done that, open RetroArch and you'll be presented with the main menu, which may mean absolutely nothing to you if you are unfamiliar with RetroArch. First, let's get some cores downloaded to your device. These are console emulators which have been adapted to work as plugins through RetroArch and can be downloaded directly through the app. Just go to Load Core, Download Core and select what you want from the list. Note that as soon as you tap a core in the list, it will download to your device. The only way to then uninstall a core is to go to the RetroArch app settings and clear data. So which cores are best for which console? Below are our core picks for the most popular consoles, based on the broadest compatibility and the best performance with most games. There will be certain games that don't quite conform to this list, but for most people we believe that it's optimal. Best cores in RetroArch. Game Boy Advance, MGBA. Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Gambette. Nintendo, or NES, Nestopia. Nintendo 64, Mupen 64 Plus. PlayStation, PCSX, Rearmed. Sega Genesis, Game Gear. Genesis Plus GX, Pico Drive from Sega 32X Games. Sega Saturn. The strangely named Yabba Ooze, very strenuous performance wise. And Sega Nintendo or SNES, SNES 9X. Configure RetroArch. After you have all your cores set up, to get it to detect your games, you'll need to get the ROMs and ISOs for your games onto your Android device. We stress that these should be copies of games you already own. Once you have the games on your device, you can load them one by one by going to Load Content, then navigating to them from there. Alternatively, you can set up proper playlists. To do this, tap the Playlists icon, the middle option at the bottom of your RetroArch screen, then Scan Directory. Select the directory where you keep your ROMs, then select Scan This Directory. The ROMs for each console will now be neatly contained in separate folders in the Playlists menu you can select and run your games from here. Configure controls for each core. This can be a bit confusing. If you're just using the touchscreen, then you don't need to do much as each core has its own customizable on-screen touch display to control games. If you're using a controller, however, you may want to do some tweaking. If you want an idea of how to connect console controllers via Bluetooth, hit up our guide on how to connect a PS4 controller to your Android device. Link in the description. To make changes to controls and so on in each individual core, you first need to load that core using Load Core and load a game using Load Content or from your playlist. Next, in the RetroArch main menu, you should now see an option called Quick Menu. Tap it, then tap Controls and scroll down to configure controls for that game. Here's the thing, you can then save these controls to apply to all games on that core. Save Core remap file or just to that individual game. Save Game remap file. Select the save option that suits your needs and then you can get back to your game. Other tweaks. From the quick menu for a given core you can make all kinds of tweaks. You can add visual enhancements and filters from the shaders menu for example or if you're running a game you can go to the quick menu to save state and load state, a godsend if you're playing saveless NES games. But if you don't have a core loaded you can go to the settings menu, input, input hotkey binds, to set quick buttons for things like save state, rewind and crucially menu toggle. 
which takes you to the RetroArch menu. On a PS4 controller, we like to set this as the PS button. Among the many other interesting features in the settings menu is Achievements, which links up RetroArch with RetroAchievements.org, unlocking achievements for thousands of retro games. Conclusion This guide should now be more than enough to get you started with the wonderful RetroArch. As you probably noticed by now, RetroArch is feature rich, making it a particularly deep and fun rabbit hole to go down. If you have any recommendations for calls we haven't mentioned above, do let us know in the comments. If you like this video then please tap that like button, leave a comment and also perhaps visit our Make Tech Easier YouTube channel for more guides, tutorials and lists about all things tech. We cover Windows, Linux, Mac, iOS, Android and everything in between so we'll almost definitely have something for you. Plus if you feel so inclined hit the subscribe button and never miss our latest videos and hey why not hit the notification bell too and be alerted immediately when new videos hit the channel. Okay, as always, thanks for watching. That's it for now. See you next time.